welcome to Go Pan Field Show with me, Turn. And me, River. Yay! And today we're going to make magical biscuits from Dotted Lime. And thank you guys so much for sending this to us. And you get, yeah, if you guys want to get your own, you can go to this link. Right here. Right here. It's this one. Yeah. Yeah, it's right there. And I am super excited to make biscuits because biscuits are really yummy. And they go really well with like butter, or honey, jam, anything. Cream cheese. You can make a really good like breakfast and like egg. Okay, we're getting instructed. Okay. So the way you're gonna make these is you're just gonna take some of this. Let's open it first. Magic paper. You're only gonna need like two and oh that's my idea, but I got my hands, which are used to. You're only gonna take two scissors. and one third cups. <laughs> so you can make about two batches of these probably, which is nice. And Ooh. then you're basically going to take so two and one third cups of this magical We're biscuit going mix. Fast. Slow down. One cup of milk <laughs> and one tablespoon of vinegar. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the vinegar, just pour it into the milk, and you can stir that up since you're good at stirring stuff. Yay! And, and then spoon. Spoon. while you're doing that, you're just going to take your mix and you're going to put it into the bowl. And then add your vinegar vinegar milk mixture and it's called buttermilk. It's basically butter. Okay, smaller normal, biscuits. Normal size biscuits. biscuits. Normal size biscuits. Maybe, like, maybe like ten. Ten biscuits? Okay. Ten, I guess. I'm gonna say it's eight to ten. Is my I'm gonna say it's gonna be probably five to five no one number. You have to pick one no, one number. Uh, twenty biscuits. Twenty biscuits. Okay, great. I think in eight. Actually no, I'm gonna say ten. Ten biscuits. Okay, ten biscuits. Now we're just going to stir this together. Actually, no, I am going to say 20 biscuits. Okay. Now we're just going to stir this together. <laughs> and then, um, wait, wait, wait. let's use a different thing. Like a whisk or something. Um, we're going to stir this together, and then you're just going to let it sit for three minutes. And then you can start putting it. You can let it sit? Yeah, for three minutes. That's easy. Yeah, I'll get the flour. And we also have to knead it, of course, since it's a dough, so I'm going to get some floured surface up. And this flour is available on Thrive Market. Ooh, yeah. You want to get your own flour. Flour. I just thought, you know what would be really good with these biscuits, like, on top? What? Like, after you can just, like, make it, like, give it, like, a golden brown before? What? You put some fresh pressed olive oil or butter on it. Ooh, that does sound good. Give it a nice... Because... You're not... I don't know. Wow, you have flour all over from here. You had dog hair all over from here. Okay, so now that this is done, <laughs> I'm just gonna take our magical biscuit stuff. I forgot about that. I wonder like, how they got the name dotted line, Dina. Mm. Oh yeah, because I watched my podcast. <laughs> how did you guys think, figure out the name for the dotted line? Because it's a really interesting, unique name. Yeah. Sure, so when my wife Chrissy and I were talking about uh, opening the restaurant, we really wanted to make sure that we had a name that um, created an image of freshness and vibrance. Yeah. Um, but I also observed that some of the most eclectic restaurants that I had been to seemed to be a random noun paired with a random adjective. And uh, oh, yeah. so Chr Chrissy started a, a list of nouns and adjectives and one day texted the dotted line to me and I thought it was perfect and we all agreed on it and um, the rest is history. Oh, that's how. Cool. This is hard to take out. There we go. Okay, now we can start eating. What this black stone reminds me of? Chalkboard that they have on Space? The huh? What? No. <laughs> the chalkboard that they have at the dotted line like on the floor that you get to draw on. Huh. Well, while I was researching, I, not I noticed that you guys have chalkboard, chalkboard floors on your restaurant. Why, why, do you, why did you guys, what made you, what was the inspiration for that? Well, we wanted the restaurant to be uh, comfortable for, for families. Um, and that seemed like a, a nice way to get some of the younger kids uh, off the top of the table. Yeah. And uh, down onto their hands and knees just coloring on the floor. Unfortunately, when, um, when the pandemic came through, uh, we had to rethink that practice, um, yeah. you know, the germs and all. And uh, so we have uh, since gone to uh, chalkboards that hang on the walls, but uh, oh, that's we, fun. We, we've really got some great ar archived uh, chalkboard <laughs> floor art that, uh, that we have, so. Which one's your favorite? 
this one that was like, um, there was this ginormous horse that somebody did. The, uh, there was a, a horse jumping over a rainbow or something? Yeah, and there was also this one where um, Jacob's sister did it. She, um, she a, what's it called? A manatee. A manatee. So now we're basically patting it an inch thick like this. It's basically pretty good. But do you know how long biscuits have been around? Mm, I'm guessing since mm, pilgrims, perhaps. I don't know. Oh, maybe. I wonder maybe if Chef Paul. Little in the prairie. Did they I wonder if Chef Paul's ancestors made biscuits. Pilgrims, so. <laughs> Where did you learn to cook, or if you did attend a culinary school, uh, which school was that? Uh, so, uh, my my grandfather um, was a chef. My Great grandfather moved to the United States in like 19, 1919 or something like that, oh. and uh, he opened a, res a restaurant in uh, Brooklyn. And oh. uh, so, um, so it started with my great grandfather, and then my grandfather kind of uh, took that, took on that, um, put that hat on, so to speak. And uh, he was a professional chef for sixty years, and my father kind of carried that on and so then um i did the same cool and so i really learned learned a lot from my dad and my grandfather that's cool what was the name of their what was the name of your father's restaurant okay. so um so my they all use uh our last name oh, uh, in the title so my great-grandfather was the house of Jensen. And then my grandfather's uh, catering was Jensen Caterers. And uh, my father carried that on. And uh, then um, as we opened the restaurant in Tennessee, we, we branched off a little bit. Yeah. One of the dotted line. I like, I kind of like that name the best. The kid's gonna make like three. I was way off the... Here, well, do we have any smaller circle cuts? <gasps> Wait, cups, duh. Oh, I do have a rolling pin. Kind of like brushing egg whites on chocolate on hollow bread, which you guys should. Which you guys should go podcast. check out on our World Bread to the World podcast. That was a really good podcast. That yeah. bread is delicious. We mentioned that in uh, this interview. Yeah, Talk Ethiopian bread. bread. So oh. in in Jer in Jera in Ethiopia is um, like rice in Central America or um, you know I I don't know that that us as Americans have. Uh, have a staple like injera, yeah. but injera is eaten with every single meal. Uh, oh, injera wow. in Ethiopia is basically used instead of uh, utensils. So hmm. um, injera is used to uh, to grab the food, um, the the different um, uh, different toppings or uh, main dishes and side dishes, and uh, eat instead of uh, using a utensil like we would use. Oh, interesting. And Jim is like America's version of seasoning. You guys put that on everything. Yes. <laughs> Salt. I love butter. Me too. <gasps> Did I win this bet? I don't know. I said <gasps> eight to ten to twenty. If it's nine, I said eight. It's you one, said two, ten. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I if said it's, if I it's said nine. Eight to ten. So we said specific number. I think it's awesome that we had the chance to meet Chef Paul virtually because he's really good at making biscuits. And he turned out a really cool recipe, like where like you wrap this, you take like I don't know, like five pounds of salt, and then you wrap it, and then you take this beef and you wrap it in the salt in a towel, and then you cook the towel in the fire, and you watch the towel burn away, and then you got this really cool salt crust on the steak, and then you can like chisel the steak out, and um, then you get to eat it, and it's like salty. Our dad tried it. And it didn't quite go out as planned, but it's still good. Uh, okay, well, here's our last biscuit. It's a baby biscuit. What? No. And I said eight to 10. I didn't say specific. We said specific number. If we, were, if we rewind this podcast, we will find the word okay, specific Okay, I just, we just had more biscuits left. And I didn't want to eat it, so. Are you gonna eat? Okay, we're I good. guess we're not having another biscuit. I guess we'll have to Yay, put these we all tie. out. Since we're twins. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, so then we're going to preheat your oven to 400, and you're just going to cook them for seven minutes on 400, and then you bring them down to 350 just to let them finish cooking. And it depends on what kind of oven, how long it's going to take when you bring it down to 350. And then when you kind of see like a golden brown crust and you take one 
and you spring it and it'll like spring back up. That means that it's pretty much done. Or you can stick a toothpick in. And then you still them cool and then you can eat them for Thanksgiving. They're really good on Thanksgiving. And, and the oven is preheated to 400 degrees. All right, so and, oh, okay. Well, man, this is good stuff. Basically, after, after it's basically almost done cooking, so after it's done seven minutes, then you're gonna turn it down to 350 and cook it for another eight minutes. What's this? You know, I literally <laughs> just said that. Oh, you did? Oh it my so goodness. Delicious. It's just so simple. It's so yeah. easy. That's pretty cool. Yep, they're good. Bump them back up. And if you want to, I'm not sure if this works on biscuits or not, but I'm pretty sure it does with those baked goods where you stick a toothpick in. And if it doesn't come out with like any crumbs on it, it's usually pretty close to them. Um, yum! Let's try one. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what? what? I'll let them cool first. I need to bite them. I need to eat them now. Okay. Yeah. Ta-da! What? Do you want like a plate? No, I'm just going to cut it in half like this. Okay. Fuck it over here. I guess it works too. Oh, it's so only about you. Well, like, Taryn, Dad said not to eat that. And like today, you're like, mmm, cinnamon gum. But <laughs> <laughs> triangle, kind of. So our biscuits are now done. Yum. Mm, yummy. Ours took a little bit longer since our oven just takes a little while longer than theirs does. But that usually has happened, and let's try them. I'll get some butter. I don't need no butter. It tastes good by itself. But I, well, they I have like a really butter. good consistency. You can like, I, I advise putting butter on top because you can really taste the butter and it gives it a nice taste. Maybe put some salt in it too. We kind of forgot that, and I think it'd be good with salt. But mm. it's really good. Okay. It's really good, I actually really like this. And if you guys want to get your own, you can I'll click the link down here. Yeah. And this is pretty easy. It would just take like mm -hmm. 30 minutes at the most. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Better with salt. I said that. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for listening to our Chef Paul interview biscuit with biscuits. Thingy podcast. I and hope you guys love super these biscuits. Good. Order some. On and this link. This one. This one right here. here. Third time we've. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And thank you guys again so much for listening. If you have any uh, questions or comments, you can comment down below. If you want to see more podcasts, videos, videos, photos, recipes, awesome recipes, go to gogreencooking.com. If you have any really cool Q&A questions to ask us for our next Q&A podcast, go you to can just this link in the captions. In the captions down below. Um, also check out our Instagram and Facebook. See you guys next time. Bye. This episode was brought to you by Thrive Market and these other wonderful sponsors. Remedy Kids, Farmer's Juice, and Desert Farms. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Now it's our time for a bit of fun in our new podcast segment called River and Terrence 10 New Ideas. Be sure to catch more of our ideas on our new Go Greenfields 10 Ideas blog at gogreenfields.com forward slash 10 ideas. So our first favorite idea is Terrence's idea and it is a specific dog petting chart which is basically a little website where you can look up your dog if it's a purebred or a mutt. If it's a mutt, you just look up like Chihuahua plus, I guess, a poodle. And then it would come up with the specific places where it likes that dog to be pet. Our dog really likes this the ears. Idea. He is yeah. totally tuning in and snuggling right yeah. up. Yeah. Our second 10 new ideas of our top three would be a reusable pizza box with an infrared heater. This was my idea. And sometimes pe people don't like cold pizza. And if it's a long trip from the pizza place, the car has to keep the pizza warm. And how are they going to do that? Well, voila, we've got a pizza box with an infrared heater in it so it could keep the pizza warm and the cheesy, in the cheese melty, melty, is that a word? Melty. Melty. Melted. And then you can, and then you, it's also reusable, so it also saves up cardboard and makes your pizza taste good. Yeah. And then our third and final idea is for paintball battles, and it is a nitric oxide converter for paintball wars. Yeah, we always have so trouble. You, you know, getting, yeah, like, those little, we, we always, yeah, but. You know those little metal tubes that you put in the paintball gun and actually makes it, like, fire the paintballs? Well, uh, those kind of run out really fast, and they're kind of expensive, so I came up with an idea that you take the little tin thing after the cap is off and it's all used, and you put it in the little machine, and then you press the button, and it converts the... It sucks some air and it converts it to nitric oxide and pushes it in, and then you just, like, buy little caps, like a box of caps, and it puts a cap on, 
and then you got it. So you For can all reuse the serious spiders. Yeah, so you can reuse it, which is uh, really helpful because they're really annoying sometimes. And those are our 10 new ideas for this, this podcast. Be sure to tune in next week to get some more top three and our next week's of 10 new ideas. Yay! Uh, what is the most popular thing on your menu? What do you think? Or what's your... So, so tell, tell them what the most popular thing is. It's definitely the cinnamon rolls. Oh, I love cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls. <laughs> My grandma you, makes do you guys have you guys have any words you have a hard time saying? Mm, okay, S- I mix up cinnamon and synonym a lot. Yes, that that's what Amelia does. So yeah, yeah. Our, our most our most popular menu item is definitely the cinnamon roll. Yeah, not a cinnamon roll. Not a, not a yeah. cinnamon roll. C- C- cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon roll. Yeah. It's hard to that's say. It yeah, it's fun to say. Uh, speaking of like the cinnamon rolls and other baked goods. Uh, we asked a lot if we like cooking or baking better. Which ones do you guys prefer? Well, so perfect for, for us opening a restaurant. I, I lean towards uh, savory cooking. Yeah. And my wife, Chrissy, definitely leans towards uh, the baking and the pastries. So cool. it's, uh, it's like a match made in heaven. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty and Amelia, cool. Amelia just eats it all. <laughs> yeah. Yay. How different is the co- or the cuisine from the when you change like from the north to south? Well, so it, it's very interesting because the the cuisine and if you look at the history of of cuisines in different parts of the United States, it really has to do a lot with the um, uh, with the availability of either fresh water or ocean water, and so uh, and also the climate. So um, you know in where, where I am, um, there's not a, a very great supply of uh, fresh seafood, uh, yeah. but, oh. uh, but we do have freshwater seafood, so catfish is very popular yeah. here. And then any, any grains that be, can be grown in the field is very popular. Uh, yeah. Chickens and, uh, and beef, and I lived in Colorado for a while, and uh, bison and buffalo were uh, very prevalent on menus and yeah. uh, we had rattlesnake on menus. And so, you know, up in the, in the Pacific Northwest, you've got a, um, a good deal of, you know, winter vegetables and mushrooms yeah. and some great selection of fish, of fresh seafood, uh, which is just amazing. And you don't, you don't find that here. And then yeah. on the East coast where I grew up, so I, uh, you, your dad was down here in Tennessee not too long ago. And, yeah. um, he was at a function that that I prepared the food for, and uh, said you wrapped really... some meat in a towel. Yes, yeah, it's called uh, Loma al Trapo, and uh, mm-hmm. you cook the you wrap the meat in uh, in salt in a towel and cook it directly on the red hot embers of a fire, uh, and the mm-hmm. fire burns the towel off and creates a salt mm-hmm. crust, and then you uh, crack the salt crust off and, and carve it, and it's uh, just su- super tender, full flavored uh, way to prepare. Uh, beef tenderloin. Interesting. Cool. This episode was brought to you by Thrive Market and these other wonderful sponsors. Farmity Kids, Farmer's Juice, and Desert Farms.